This is CES M M A. Here is the MTR Racing tail of the tape in the Bantamweight division. Rob Sullivan taking on Brandon Fleming. Fleming comes in at 3-2, and two, fighting out of South Shore Sport Fighting in Marshfield, Mass. Sullivan at 3-1, and one, coming out of Baltimore, Maryland, and Baltimore BJJ. Let's send it down to Rick Provost for the official introduction. This is the MTR Racing bout of the evening. It's a fight scheduled for three five-minute rounds in the Bantamweight division. We begin first with the fighter coming out of the blue corner. He weighed in at 139 and one half pound. He has a professional record of three wins with one loss. He hails from Baltimore, Maryland, representing Baltimore BJJ. Please welcome Rob Sullivan. Join me in welcoming his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 141 pounds. His professional record is three wins and two losses, one win coming by way of submission. He hails from Marshfield, Massachusetts. He represents South Shore Sport Fighting. He's an active member of the Rhode Island, I'm sorry, of the United States National Guard. Would you please welcome Brandon Bad Luck Fleming. The referee in charge at the bell is Kevin McDonald. All right, we're ready for round number one in this bantamweight bout. Brendan Fleming taking on Robert Sullivan. I am Mike Parenti joined by Scott Ream, CES MMA 22, back on the way. Nice to see two Irish guys getting it on so close to St. Patrick's Day. That's true, that's Monday coming up on the calendar. My birthday, by the way. As well it should be. I'm waiting for your card in the mail. <laughs> it's going to be in Gaelic. Can you read it, Mike? <laughs> Both fighters in black trunks, so the best way to differentiate would be the green shin wraps for Brandon Fleming. Fleming looking for the takedown and makes it. Excuse me, Sullivan makes that takedown. We've seen Sullivan here before. If you remember, August of 2013, he beat Dennis Paiva by unanimous decision, so he's no stranger to this neck of the woods. No, it was a tough fight, too, for Dennis. And also just had a win at Bellator in November over Sergio De Silva. So Sullivan comes in on a bit of a roll, but so has Brendan Rooney winning his last two fights as well. So it's anybody's fight tonight. Yeah, Mr. Fleming is doing really well defending that takedown right now. This is a really good matchup. Once again, as much as uh, reluctant as it is, Pat Sullivan, nice job. <laughs> Fleming has also fought for Bellator as well. He's fought for world-class MMA at Foxwoods Casino a year ago, too. In his most recent fight, had a first-round knockout win over Eric Lee. That was at Mohegan Sun. Fleming doing a good job now trying to reverse. Nice attempt to take down, but it was stuffed very well by Sullivan. A little real leg kick on the out from Mr. Fleming. But the one edge Fleming does have, he's got about a two-inch height advantage. Long legs as well, which could help him in those kicks. You see right there the rear leg kick. Well, you'd like to see him to start use that length to his advantage, whether it be from the lead leg or from the jab. But once again, you have a southpaw and an orthodox fighter, so that jab is virtually a nice rear leg kick to the head. That jab is virtually a non-factor. Non Brandon caught him with a nice little uppercut, short little uppercut to kind of rock Sullivan right there. There's that head kick again for a second time. It was checked well, but it's still moving you around a bit. Both men exchanging lead legs on that, and we're back to the grappling. Sullivan seems like he wants to really engage up against the cage. We've seen that early on, trying to get that takedown. Well, you saw, you know, he comes from a BJJ school, so the clinch in the ground might be uh, a place he feels very, very comfortable. And of course, that's a, as a game plan, try to take your opponent to your comfort zone. Sullivan doing a good job here, working for that takedown, but Fleming just as well, countering it. Fleming looking to hit that switch, and he got stuffed. I always wonder whether these shorter fighters have an advantage on leg takedowns against taller fighters. It works both ways. You know, center of gravity is lower, et cetera, but those long legs, man, when you spread them out, it's really hard to, to kind of boa constrictor them in and, and get the advantage. So as you can see right now, both fighters using 
both the height differences to their advantage. Sullivan staying low, and Fleming just reaching out with those long arms, long legs to hit those, uh, you got a nice hip toss right there. Sullivan has Fleming's back. Fleming does a nice job to turn around. South Shore Sport Fighting is an excellent grappling school. So this is no place where Brendan hasn't been before. Oh, that one there was a little south of the border. Yeah, Fleming tried to deliver a knee as well on the way up, but he caught one in the wrong spot as Sullivan made his way back up to his feet. So he'll get some time to take a breather. And Kevin McDonald directing him back to the neutral corner. I am going to beg Fight Stream to show me that again. We know Scott Ream likes to replay. Yay! Right on cue, here we go. Yep, exchanging knees. And Fleming caught it in the wrong spot. Uh, inadvertent, of course. You know, one time's never enough for me. <laughs> we might need to see that one again. I'll tell you what, for Christmas, I'm going to make a compilation of all the best groin shots. The groin yes. shots. Thank you, Santa. Coming now, to a DVD near you. Here it is one more time. Yeah, both fighters threw them at the same time. So as Brennan raised up, that's when it kind of slid up the inside leg. Nice job. Brennan Fleming shaking this off. Here he comes. Spinning back fist, but it got jammed. Action resumes. 120 to go in round number one. Sullivan working the neck here. He's not looking for a guillotine as much as a, a whip. Fleming do a good job basing out and countering with knees. Yeah, Fleming has done a nice job with the takedown defense. Really, his strategy seems to just kind of sprawl out. That's those long legs working to his advantage. Makes a very tough base. Fleming shoots for the double. There's a knee by Fleming, just a little short. You know, if anything, those long legs can help delivering those knees while you're standing against that cage. A lot of Mr. LeBurge last fight. 30 seconds to go in round one. Fleming taking on Sullivan in the Bantamweight division here at CES MMA 22. Nice knee to the body by Fleming. There's been a lot of jockeying for position here early on in this first round, Scott, and really toward the end as well. Well, it's very intricate. Grappling is what you're seeing right now. Both fighters doing an excellent job of defending the other. 10 seconds, anybody's round. Nice rear leg. That rear leg's finding a home for Fleming. Yeah, Fleming did a nice job establishing that midway through that round, delivered one more toward the end, so maybe something that he could use to his advantage as his fight gets into round number two. Find his distance. It's proud to introduce its official team you hear Fleming's corner say, not a mark on you, as he made his way back to the uh, to his corner. Well, that's also going to instill a little confidence to let Brandon know that his corner's happy with where they're sitting, and what are we going to do from here? It's been difficult for Sullivan to get the takedowns he wants and to use his jujitsu to his advantage. So if you are in Sullivan's corner right now, you know the opponent has the height advantage, he has those long legs. What do you do to try to counter that to get those takedowns? Try to work the takedown away from the cage. What Brandon's doing very well right now is basing out against the cage. So you gotta try to hit him in the center of the cage, center in kind of right on the CES emblem and to see how well he takes down in an open spot when he doesn't have his back up against the cage to support. Round two underway in this bantamweight bout between Brendan Fleming and Robert Sullivan. Fleming, of course, in the neon green shin wraps. Sullivan come out aggressive early. That rear leg from Fleming has landed exactly every time. Excellent defense by Sullivan. Oh, uh, Fleming went for the guillotine to drop down and missed it. Nice job by Sullivan to reverse that. He actually has head control now and a nice strong base. Between rounds, you mentioned to go for the takedowns toward the center of the cage and away from the cage itself, and I think Sullivan tried to do that early on. Well, it's all a matter of, you know, best laid plans on mice and men. It's kind of easy to call from here. Both fighters are doing a great job defending each other in the grappling. You can see right now where Brennan goes for the single leg, and Sullivan's using a Kimura attack to try to negate the single. They're both very educated in the grappling. They're both doing a great job countering each other. Nice uppercut left combo by Fleming. 
Well, I'd like I see, to see some blood, Scott. I'd like to see Fleming go to the body a little bit more, either with a straight leg or even a knee. Combination ended with the knee to the body against the shorter fighter. Looks like Fleming is cut above his left ear. Yeah, it's high in the, it's high in the head. It's borderline. That's where the uh, behind the head line is issued. The way that the referee will tell you is like, think about a pair of headphones, you're wearing a pair of headphones. Anything past where the headphones end would be the back of your head. It doesn't appear to obstruct his vision at all since it's behind the ear. So. And that's really the only thing we're looking for is to make sure there's no blood in the eyes as a result of the cut. Now there's blood under Fleming's eye. I don't know if that's from a different cut or the same cut. It's hard to tell. But Fleming's still going strong here. 305 to go in round two. There's that rear leg. Very well defended by Sullivan, but it's finding a home. You know, Sullivan checks it very well and keeps coming. I'd like to see him counter off it. Give him a reason maybe not to throw it as often. Yeah, I think that blood, Mike, is actually streaking down from the head. Not a, not a different cut on his face. Nice straight one-two combination by Fleming. Yeah, that right hand caught Sullivan on the way in. He's done a nice job, Sky, really using his lane to his advantage as we've seen more so in round number two. But well, I'd like to see Brennan keep that left up higher. And actually, with the height difference, that jab could be established by the taller fighter coming down over Sullivan's left arm. But Brennan Holt likes to hold that about chest high. Another hard left by Fleming. But give Sullivan credit, Scott. He's not shying away from trying to fight on no, the inside. This is a very evenly matched, well-fought fight. Both guys are, you know, belong in there. You can see how even this, this fight is. There's not a clear-cut advantage one way or the other. Just under two minutes to go in round number two. Fleming fly trying to knee. fly a knee. <laughs> but Sullivan caught him on the way in. And you're right, good action, evenly matched. Both fighters trying to be the aggressor at certain points in this bout. Well, you can see right here, hit, you see Sullivan hit that single leg takedown. Brennan sprawls very well, and now he's looking to, to hit his switch and transition. Both these guys are doing exactly what you're supposed to do to counter the other. Nice elbows there by Fleming. I think that's very underutilized. I agree. Sullivan again goes to hit that single, and you can see Brennan's right hand underneath that leg looking to hit that switch. Now we look like we got some blood coming from Sullivan's head. Could be an accidental or could have been those elbows. I'd lean towards those elbows. I agree. I think those elbows might have opened it up. At first, I thought it might have been some of Fleming's blood, but that seems like it's really pouring out of Sullivan above the right ear on the opposite side. So it's been a bloody fight here as we get through round number two, just under a minute to go. Nobody wants to uh, over-engage at the moment. Both guys have each other's respect. Nice straight right hand by Sullivan. I'd like to see more of those against the southpaw. I agree. If you can keep him on the end of that jab, Scott, it's going to temper his aggressiveness somewhat. Although Sullivan's tough, he'll keep coming at him. But if he does that, he'll keep eating stiff jabs and right hands. A taller southpaw should be able to come over the shoulder fighter's jab, or extended left hand. But in the same breath, the shorter right-handed fighter should be throwing double, double right hands. Even if you can't contact to the head right away, you throw the first right hand to the body and follow up to the head. 10 seconds to go in round two. Good defense by both fighters, nice exchange. Some nice stand-up here toward the end of this round. The action really picking up. That'll do it for round two, Scott. Another evenly matched round of what's been a great fight so far. Absolutely. saw a glimpse of that cut over right uh, over the right ear of Robert Sullivan. Fleming has one on the left side, so they're matching cuts here. 
That's how evenly matched this fight is. <laughs> Even the cuts are matched. Even the cuts are one for one in the same spot. Unbelievable. Round three about to get underway in this Bantamweight bout. Brendan Fleming, Robert Sullivan. We're here live cage side at CES MMA 22. I am Mike Parenti joined by my broadcast partner, Scott Reem. Nice right hand for Fleming coming out. Now Fleming's starting to throw that straight right, follow with the straight left hand. He, gotta, he has to keep that left up, his right hand up higher to come over Sullivan's left hand. And Fleming, of course, still trying to mix in the lefts and rights and those leg kicks that you mentioned that have found a home despite great defense by Sullivan throughout this fight. Well, he needs the separation. Fleming needs the separation to let that leg kick go, whether he doubles it up or whether he brings that leg to the body now. He's thrown three beautiful head kicks, all of which Sullivan has caught very high. His hands were up as he's supposed to. Now might be a good time to bring that leg to his liver. Sullivan kind of going back to the strategy that we saw in round number one. Fleming using the cage to his advantage. I think we're going to take a look at this cut right now. Kevin McDonald doesn't like what he's seeing. That's a nasty cut, much more damaging than what Fleming has over his left ear. Well, his corner didn't do great work with it, to be honest with you. Well, they don't have Scott Ream in their corner side <laughs> of the cuts, that's why. The so lesson sure. to be learned. But the doctor taking a look, and that blood is pouring out now. It's getting a lot worse. We'll see if they make a call on this here. Now, to be honest, it looks like they should be able to let this one go, unless the doctor can see bone or it's arterial. And typically, if it's over the eye, it's a whole lot worse. It's more of a distraction for the fighter. The blood not affecting his sight line whatsoever, just streaking down the side of the head and down his neck and chest. Well, you just heard Sullivan say, it's not in my eye. Right. And it's not. And if it's not an arterial bleed, he should be fine to go. And it looks like he's OK. Sullivan probably annoyed a bit by the brief stoppage, but it gives him a chance to catch his breath, if anything. All right, we're back to the action in round three, just over a minute into it. Sullivan now with a little more urgency after being addressed by the doctor, which is shows you what a smart intellectual fighter he is. Once the doctor gets involved, anything can happen. So right now he's on borrowed time. Both fighters coming in with two fight win streaks, so somebody's streak will end at some point. Be interesting to see how the judges score this one, as we always say when we sit here cage side, if uh, this does go the distance. <laughs> I, I, I don't, uh, don't I know even want to speculate. I know you don't always look forward to that. 3.17 to go. But it has been a tough one to score, nonetheless. For both fighters. I mean, right now I'd be leaning towards Fleming, he looks like he's carrying the third round, but we got three minutes left in it. And while that cut over Sullivan's right eye is not affecting the fight whatsoever, it sure makes for a great picturesque background. <laughs> the blood, his entire right side of his body covered in blood. And Fleming's got some too, a lot of his own over his, the cut over his left head seems to have healed somewhat. We don't see that much of a factor at this point. Nice short right uppercut there. Halfway through the third and final round in this Bantamweight bout. It's been an even fight. Nice overhand right by, by Sullivan on Fleming. The reason that didn't have more, more power to it was Fleming, again, chin down, eyes up. You know, good defensive position. He didn't have to eat the whole thing. But that's been this whole fight. Both fighters, fantastic defensive position. Whether it's been defending takedowns, whether it's been countering each other standing up. <laughs> Sullivan with a little burst trying to get him up against the cage. Superman punch was short, but the rear leg landed by Fleming. You wonder if we'll see more of that down the stretch here, Scott. Some fighter may try to just do it, not a desperation move, but maybe try to land that one knockout blow to turn the fight around. Well, you know, a Superman punch sometimes, if you see it, if you think you can land it, it's great. Sometimes you throw it just to mix it up. 
So both fighters, again, evenly matched. It's a pretty even bout, depending on your perspective. And more than anything else, you gotta try something a little different. Right. If you, if you feel it's that close, and both fighters should feel it's that close, you kinda gotta let it all hang out. Whatever you have in your toolbox has to come out right now. Nice straight left hand by Fleming. Another left by Fleming, that one lands again. Sullivan looks pretty comfortable here in the stand-up in round number three. Oh, nice short knee on the way out. Stiff left hand again by Sullivan. Sullivan's starting to find, finally starting to find his range two plus rounds into it. Yeah, he definitely found a rhythm here, and you wonder if it's too little too late, but he's got 30 seconds to go. Both fighters trying to make something happen here in the final minute. Well, one of these two guys will both need to flurry out. Great job, he was in deep, Fleming was in deep for the takedown, and Sullivan did a great job of hipping in and, and getting an underhook. Again, that's how evenly matched this fight is. I hate to admit it, but we're gonna be saying nice things about Pat Sullivan again. Another great fight matched by Pat Sullivan. 10 seconds to go in the third and final round of this Bantamweight bout. It's been a bloody war between Brendan Fleming and Robert Sullivan, and that will do it. Both fighters embrace in the middle of the cage, a mutual respect for one another, and of Without course, doubt. you absolutely would have that after a fight like this. It'd be interesting to see again how this is scored. I'm not sure I can tell you sitting right here now who has the edge or who may have won the fight. If, if I have to look back at it, I would give the third round to Fleming by a, just by a hair. Even with Sullivan toward the end, really. Really bringing it on, Fleming had he was prodding forward most of the most of that third round. He landed the better exchanges. Those elbows opened his head up very well. You know, it's, it's, it's a 6-5 pick him right now. If we see two rounds to one or a split, I, you really can't argue. That's perspective of the judge. If there's a, I also think that Sullivan won the first round. So I don't see a 30-27 a, a fight here. Well, that's an interesting view on how they score it because Sullivan was aggressive trying to get those takedowns, but Fleming stuffed a lot of them early on in the fight. So does the credit go to the fighter for stuffing the takedowns? Well, we've said it so many times, Mike. The defense is its own reward. Pro if you defend really well and you go on the ground and, and you're defending off your back, that's your own reward. Stuffing the takedown, that's your own reward. So in a, in a scoring system, you want to look at it where Okay, I attempted the takedown. You might want to give him a little cage control, but on the flip side of that, stuffing the takedown doesn't gain you any points, gains your position. That's a great perspective on it. We'll see how the judges score it, which side they favor, what side of the fence they're on when it comes to judging a fight like this, an evenly matched bout, which is so tough. If you're a judge, the best thing you'd hope for is somebody getting all the takedowns and just establishing position throughout the fight, but it doesn't always happen. And it certainly doesn't happen a lot here at CES MMA. And we saw that tonight with this evenly matched bout in this Bantamweight division, Fleming Sullivan. A, a war from start to finish, a bloody war. Both fighters opened up above their ears toward the back of the head. Kind of ironic how they had cuts in the same spot. Everything was so evenly matched and so identical. So we will send it down to our cage side announcer, Rick Provost, who will have the official decision. For the official decision, we go to the judges' scorecard. All three judges score the bout 29 28. Your winner, Brandon Badlock Fleming. Fleming.